So I'm going to give a spoiler warning for this episode because not that many people saw this movie and I'd highly recommend you giving it a watch before you see this analysis. Okay? Good. TMNT 2007 or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2007 for the fans and for the franchise was a perfect film. The characters, the animation, the story, it was a masterpiece they had been waiting for. It is the hot topic of the TMNT franchise. Even though it has this label, it's still a fantastically written movie and with extremely impressive animation. And as a serious adaptation of a less than serious property, to give it a comparison, it does everything that Sonic 06 should have but failed to do. This was another movie that I had toys for as a kid. TMNT 2007 falls perfectly into the style that I described in the Real Steel analysis. It was dark, it was a smaller studio that had gotten this early access to CGI and indirectly used it to its advantage. The dark, sweeping landscape shots of the city of New York contrasted with the faint light of the buildings in the street below. These people really knew how to animate a city. I also remember it being surprisingly funny. Cue clip here. Um, yes, I, I guess so. <laughs> I'm smart. Surprisingly, one of the things that resonated with me the most in this movie was the perfect portrayal of the flawed brotherhood of the turtles. To me, the most impactful scene in the movie is when Leo's confronting the Night Watcher only to discover that it was Raphael all along. On a recent rewatch, I had completely forgotten that in their confrontation, Leo just straight up says, You aren't ready! You're impatient and hot-tempered, and more importantly, I'm better than you. They continue to fight, even though Leo knows that it's Raph already. The decision ultimately leads Raph to run away, leaving Leo to be captured by the Stone Brotherhood. Raph only realizes this too late. This whole scene is just so well executed. The rainfall, the character's subtle facial expressions and characterized movements, and the extremely well choreographed fights add to the perfect fight scene. I cannot believe that nobody talks about this movie anymore. When I saw it as a kid, we hooked up an old DVD player to a projector in the basement to watch it. I watched most of my childhood films like this. I think it amplified the experience in a way. I was never a hardcore fan of the TMNT franchise. I never watched the 90s live action films. I was never too fond of the Michael Bay films. I watched the 90s cartoons as a kid on DVD, but that was pretty much it. That was the extent of my prior knowledge to the franchise before this movie. But this is the film that made me wish I was more a part of this fan base. I see that they have so much passion for this franchise, and if that amount of passion and determination can result in a film like this, I have nothing but respect for that. But come on, we know that nothing beats the theme song from the 90s. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching the video. Feel free to give this video a like and maybe subscribe if you have the time. Probably only takes a second. 90% of the people who watch this aren't subscribed. My analytics are telling me, hey, you need to scream this at your audience more. And I'm like, okay, but what if they don't want to subscribe? And they're like, just do it. Okay, fine. Anyways. The next episode we're doing is on voice and love is war, which I'm very, very excited for because, haha, <laughs> that rhymed. I love these music videos so much and I just want to get it all out of my system how much I love them. Oh, there was a voice crack. Yikes. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'll see you all later. <laughs> Goodbye! Goodbye, farewell, and you parting is such sweet sorrow!